We recently reviewed Dr. Martens, the ones made in Asia you can buy at the mall, the made in England docks, Solivares, who used to make Doc Martens, and now we're on to Grip Fast, allegedly the most rugged and most punk of all the Dr. Martin-esque boots. And I wanna find out, are they actually better than Docs? Is it just a rebranded Solivare? Are the screws in the bottom actually real? Is the steel toe real? And is this actually the most punk dock style boot that you can buy? And to understand who Gripfast is and where it all came from, you have to understand their almost 100 year history because it all started in the 40s when the brand White & Co was a similarly based Northamptonshire, England boot maker similar to Solivare and Griggs. And if you don't know what we're talking about with that, let me just quickly go over the history of Doc Martin. So in the 50s and 60s, Dr. Martin in Germany revolutionized the footwear industry by coming up with this air infused sole technology that actually gave squish to boots. It was so successful, we wanted to license it out. And so we licensed it out to the Griggs family who was based in England. The Griggs family weren't capable of making the outsoles. So they contracted out NPS to make those outsoles. And that's where that initial run from the sixties up to 1995 of, of Doc Martin boots, the golden era were made by NPS and they were called Doc Martin by Solivare. After Doc Martin sold out in a lot of people's opinion, moved their production overseas. In NPS continued to make boots under the name of Solivare. So how does Gripfast fit into this whole story? Well, in 1990, Gripfast was first established following the extreme popularity of Doc Martens and the increased demand for a more rugged, extreme, and more edgy looking Doc Martin style boot. And Gripfast achieved that by adding this toe cap with a steel toe underneath, the reinforcement screws, the 22 millimeter commando sole, and they were made on an army last. And Gripfast saw a lot of popularity and a big pop in the early 90s, but unfortunately, just like Doc Martens, in around 2003, White & Co. really was struggling and they were in a position where they no longer had the amount of orders coming in to keep up with the production. It's so like could no longer sustain their business. But instead of closing altogether, they moved production to a Northamptonshire Goodyear welted factory in NPS and picked up their manufacturing. And that's why up until today, NPS is the manufacturer of Gripfast, Solivare, NPS boots, and a few other brands because of the shrinking of Northamptonshire's boot industry. And fast forward to 2023 and NPS is still making a grip fast boot line. And so that's where all those questions came in. So is this actually a more rugged dock style boot or is it just a rebranded Solivare? Did you know in 2020, there was over 5 million car crashes. That's over 15,000 per day and over 600 per hour. And that's where the sponsor of this video, Morgan & Morgan comes in because they are the nation's largest injury law firm. And in some cases, size does matter. And there's certain things that you need to do in anytime there's any kind of accident. Number one, make sure you're okay. Number two, make sure you get a police report filed. Number three, contact your insurance. And number four, make sure you have good legal representation. And that fourth step that is really vital to any kind of accident usually gets forgotten or doesn't get done quite the right way. And that's why it's so nice with Morgan & Morgan that you can file a claim in eight clicks or less. And that's because they've modernized the injury law process by making it super easy to submit your claim. And you can submit your case details, sign contracts, upload documents, and medical records all from your cell phone. And you can even text your attorney and legal team throughout the entire duration of the case. So if you're ever injured in an accident, you can check out Morgan & Morgan and you can submit that claim in eight clicks or less without having to leave your couch. So for more information, go to forthepeople.com or dial pound law, that's pound 529 from your cell phone. And thanks again to Morgan & Morgan. So what is this boot? Well, the brand is Grip Fast. The style is the black greasy 10 eye steel toe cap derby boot. They weigh one pound 13 ounces. They retail for $259, so $40 more than Solivares and about the same price as the Made in England docks. And they're obviously made in England. So the first thing I want to look at to see if these are actually more rugged and more punk and built over the top is the leather. So we're going to look at the thickness, the cross section, and the performance of this leather. And if you look at this leather, it's a lot different than the typical really high shine uh, Doc Martin leather. And that's because it doesn't have that really heavy plastic coating on top. Um, but it does have a very slight plastic coating. If you look really, really closely with the macro lens, you can see it still has plenty of the grain in there. So it's a decent leather, but you can see right on the very top, it's just a really small amount of pigment or plastic layer. And a good way to tell if it's, if it's pigment or plastic is to try to test the permeability of it. So literally I just lick my finger and see if it absorbs into the leather. And as you can see, it's mostly sitting on top. So it's mostly an impermeable layer. So that tells me it's a plasticky layer on top. Then to reconfirm that we burnt the leather to see how it smelled and how it reacted. And it seems like it is just a really, really small layer of leather, not nearly as thick as the regular docks and not even remotely as thick as a true patent leather. And as for how thick this leather is, it comes in at about 2.3 to 2.5 millimeters thick. So thicker than the rest of them. The cross section is about the same. The plastic coating is a little bit less. 
So everything's looking like it's a more rugged leather, but how does it actually perform? So we did the puncture test first, and if you remember the rest of the, the Doc Mart style boots we've tested are right around 50 pounds. Well, the Grip Fast came at 125.5 pounds, so more than double the rest of the other shoes. And if you feel the leather, you can definitely tell it's a more saturated and conditioned leather, which means it's gonna be a little bit more water resistant, it's gonna be easier to break in because you don't have that heavy plastic coating on top, and it's gonna be a lot less maintenance because you just don't have to condition it nearly as much. So, overall, is the Grip Fast leather more rugged, more punk than the rest of them? It definitely is. It's thicker, there's all those attributes we went over, but that doesn't tell the whole story of this boot because a lot of times the issues with boots are right on the inside. So if we look at the inside of this boot, you can see that it's set up pretty much just like the Sola Bears, where you have a half sock liner with a little bit of foam underneath and then a big slab of fiberboard underneath. But one thing that really stuck out to me that I did not expect was right here at the heel, it doesn't have an internal counter cover like all the rest of the Doc Martin style boots that we've re reviewed. This is built a lot more like the Pacific Northwest brands where the counter cover is on the outside of the boot and then the inside of the boot where your heel sits is the quarter panels of leather. And that can be good and bad. Usually it's a lot better because you'd have to wear through a 2.5 millimeter slab of leather before you even got to the counter. And that's why you see it a lot more in Pacific Northwest boots. The only downside of this is that right up the middle of this back stay is a seam of stitching. So depending on what kind of thread they use and how, how well it's sewn, that could be the potential fail spot in there. But we've seen this style of construction work over and over in higher quality boots. So to me, this is significantly more rugged and durable than the rest of the Dr. Martin style boots. And if we start looking at the inside of this boot, this outsole is not transparent like the rest of the boots, but I do want to see if we can hear if there's a, a wooden shank in there. So let's see if we do a little on-screen test. Maybe, or I swear there's a wooden shank in here. Oh, I can feel it, I just can't break it. So this is like going through a solar bear, so they said I don't see many broken shanks. And I can feel there's a shank in there, I can't break it. I have to get something to push on it. I don't have a marker. Yeah, those, that shank is tough to break. I can feel it in there. Wow. Okay. Yeah, that shank is surprisingly hard to break because you have to, you have to really get the material to bend. Oh, there it goes, did you hear it? Oh, it is tough to break though. So, still not the most supportive shank, but there is definitely a wooden shank in here. And, oh, I'm tired now. But you can definitely tell it's not translucent, so we don't know what the midsole is, but we can see the screws on the bottom here. And I backed one of these out, and it doesn't seem like it's going into any material, so I guess we'll really see we get it cut in half if those screws do anything. But, holy shit, I'm still tired. But we tested the durometer of this outsole and it's right on that 65 range as the rest of the boots, but you definitely do get more wear because you just have so much more material to wear through. And that was the big problem with the Made in England docks is they're just such small and shallow and narrow lugs. It's only like 100 miles and all of a sudden you're onto just a flat plane of PVC versus this. You've got like six millimeters of lugs. So outsole wise, definitely more rugged, definitely more punk. But what about the performance of this shoe? Do you actually lose performance by making this beefier, more rugged, with some of these attributes with a luggy outsole? Well, we did the bar drop first, and it bounced up about 3.5 inches, which is right on par with the rest of the, the Doc Martin style boots, with the sole bears being half an inch higher than that. So it seems like these heavy lugs might kind of kill the responsiveness or maybe the screws. And then we wanted to test the steel toe to see if it is actually a steel toe and if it will protect you in a mosh pit. So we cut the toe off and put it on our Project Farm inspired Schmiatine with the, it's like a hundred pound of railroad rail that we dropped from 36 inches. And we put carrots in there to simulate the toes. And on the first drop, pass with flying colors. Second drop completely broke all the toes. So you're good for one drop and I think that still is close enough to the safety rating that it is clearly a safety rated steel toe. So component wise even, this is definitely more rugged than Doc Martens and Solivares, but we haven't seen what's on the inside. So let's cut this thing in half and see if Grip Fast is hiding anything on the inside and if this really is the most rugged, most punk looking Doc Martin boot you can buy. We've released some new products lately with the Travel Wallet that I've literally been designing for five years. A new range of Kilties, a six, eight, and 10 inch in the fringe and the no-show, and a third camera attachment for our camera harnesses. So check these out below and thanks for supporting these videos and these products that we make by hand in the shop. So thank you guys.
All right, we got it chopped in half. And um, if you want to see more of these Dr. Martin style showdown videos, keep supporting these because that's how we decide if we're gonna do more or less. And let me know what you want us to cut apart next. And uh, so let's see what's inside. So lots of really interesting things on the inside. Some good, some bad. Uh, but the first thing I want to do is see if I can rip this apart. Well, actually, first of all, you'll notice that these screws don't go to anything. So these screws on the outsole, they're just for show. They don't actually add any durability or ruggedness to this shoe. It's all about just the look of screws. So if you're stressed about it and you don't want these to wear out your, your grandma's hardwood floors, you can just back those out. It's not gonna hurt the boot at all. So now let's see if I can actually rip this thing apart without tearing my fingers apart on these screws. Because this is a test of how, how well these are put together. Because if you don't know from the previous videos, the way this goes together, oh, there we go, is they have an outsole and a, and a welt that is both PVC. And they use a, a red hot knife to, to heat weld those two layers together. And they press them together, forming what, sh what allegedly is a really strong bond, but we've seen in the regular docks that it's not. And in the grip fast, it seems like it's, yeah, about on par with the Made in England docks. You know, it's not the easiest thing to tear apart, but you're tearing apart um, the welt material just as much as you are tearing apart the adhesion. So I would say this is maybe right in there with the Made in England Doc Martens but not nearly as hard as the Soul Bears. The Soul Bears were put on really well. And the weird thing is, is they're built in the same factory. And that's why this, some of these tests, I'm just like, we're drawing rough conclusions from them because it's hard to judge an entire boot line off a single fusion of a Soul to, to welt. But now you can see that this outsole is quite a bit different because you don't have any lattice structure on the inside. So it's gonna be a little bit more firm, but a lot more durable, so more rugged. Another thing that's really cool is you can see that the fiberboard is totally doubled up. So two layers of that three millimeter fiberboard, which is gonna give it more stability underfoot. It's gonna be a little bit harder underfoot, but you're never gonna have any of the issues of the, that lattice structure failing on you because this outsole doesn't have any. And at the heel where it does, it's gonna be like triple layered up. So definitely more rugged. But one thing that is completely unacceptable and probably the, the worst offender of something like this I've ever seen is on this steel toe, if you pull out that top layer of the fiberboard, you'll notice that the lining is wrapped underneath like most shoes, but the way that they attach it is the worst way I've ever seen it done. It's literally just bunched up and then tied together and stuffed underneath your boot. It looks like there's a little dab of glue on there. Oh, it's not even tied. It's just a little dab of glue and everything's bunched up. So it's not even tied together. It's just lightly glued and then your toes are standing on this big bunched up layer of fabric. So that is a really unfortunate thing with this boot because you're definitely gonna feel that under your foot. And you know, it is a steel toe, so like the toe area is gonna be uncomfortable anyway just because of how this, the lip of the steel goes underneath your toes. So maybe they're just like, well, you're just gonna be uncomfortable anyway, so why not? But that is not a very smart way of dealing with that issue. I feel like that should definitely be fixed. That's pretty un inexcusable in my opinion. But but maybe it compresses over time. You know, with the double layer insole and that felted midsole, what I forgot to mention is the exact same as sole of air. Maybe it compresses. That just seems like a really bad way of doing it. And finally, now we do know that it is a wooden shank and they are a lot harder to break than I thought. That really surprised me when we, when we were trying to break it. So now to the final question, is this the most rugged, is this the mo most punk looking Dr. Martin style boot out there? Well, to me, it, it clearly is. There's several points where it is more rugged, it is better. So for instance, is the leather more rugged? Yes. The counter, yes. The lining, about the same. The footbed, definitely it is, because it's doubled up. The midsole is about the same as Solovair's. The shank is the same as Solovair. The construction is about the same as the rest of them. And then the outsole is definitely more rugged. So to me, plenty of things to point to that this is the most rugged, most punk, Dr. Mark style boots you can buy, but is it worth the price? Cause it's 260 bucks, which is the same price as the Made in England docks and $40 more than Solovair's. To me, you definitely get more for more money, 
but I wouldn't say it's more better for more money. And I don't think you get $40 worth of extra durability from some of these features that seem like they're extra durable, but you're not actually gonna get the benefits from the durability. So if you want a big, heavy, steel toe, rugged looking boot, grip fast are exactly that. But they aren't really any better than Solar Bears in any practical sense. So if you want a pair of high quality docks, I still think your money is best spent on a pair of Solar Bears. But if you want that rugged style, go with grip fast. If you want that classic yellow stitch and you want a high quality pair, the Made in England docks aren't horrible either. They're just the most expensive for how little you get. So moral of the story is if you like the look of these, go with these. Other than that, you don't get a whole lot extra other than the look, just like the yellow stitch on docks. So let me know what you guys think and what your experience has been in grip fast compared to Solovair, compared to Doc Martin, because the comment section is a great resource for people who want some additional information. And let me know what other Doc Martin style boots you want us to cut apart. And thank you guys for supporting this series and everything that we do, it means a lot to me. So thank you, see ya.